Good day folks, Sean here from Air Photography. This is my beginner's guide for the DJI Action 2. This new action camera is quite different than what we've seen in the past due to its new modular design. If you've just picked one up or have received one, in this video we're going to go over everything you need to know to get up and running with your new camera quickly. Now this video is going to be from the perspective of somebody who has never used one before, so we're going to take things slow and go over everything in great detail. I also invite you to subscribe to my channel if you are new to the action camera world, as I do cover a lot of tips and tricks, tutorials and reviews for all different types of action cameras, drones, and 360 cameras, including the Action 2. There'll be several videos coming up over the coming months, diving into greater detail of what you can do with this camera. So with all that out of the way, let's just jump right in and get started. So when DJI released the Action 2, they released it in two different models. We have the dual screen combo, and we have the power combo. The camera modules in the two units are identical. The only differences are the bases that come with them, the add-on bases. The dual screen is just like it sounds, it has an extra screen on it, whereas the power combo does not have a built-in screen. Both bases add some extra functionality, which we will talk about here coming up in a minute. The only other difference between the two combos, and I'm not quite sure why they did that, when you purchase the dual screen combo, you get this extra mount. And again, we'll take a closer look at that in a minute when we check out the hardware that comes inside. The dual screen combo comes in at a price of $519, whereas the power combo comes in at $399. So it is a little bit cheaper. So let's take a look at the two different cameras here. On the right hand side here, I have the dual screen combo. And over here, I have the power combo. As you can see, that top camera module is identical. The only difference is there, you can see we have a front facing screen on the dual screen model, whereas the power combo module does not have that extra screen. So that's basically the first decision that you have to decide which is the right choice for you. That front screen can come in handy for some situations, especially if you're going to be using it for vlogging, you'd be able to see what you're filming, but it can come in handy just for lining up shots. For example, if you have this mounted on a motorcycle on the handlebars and you're going to be filming yourself, you'll be able to tell right away whether the shot is framed correctly or not. So that's the main differences between the two. Other than that, they pretty well function identically. So at this point, let's go ahead and we'll see what all comes inside the package. So when you purchase the Action 2, this is everything you're going to get inside the package, with the exception of this mount here. When you purchase the power combo as mentioned you do not get this extra mount the interesting thing that DJI did this year with the action 2 is they've made it a magnetic modular system so you can use the camera just like this if you want something small and easily wearable or if you need extra features you can add one of the bases right now I have the dual screen base attached to it now what's really nice about this modular setup is for example if you've purchased the dual screen kit you can always add on a battery base later on you can just attach the dual screen mod you can buy these separately if you just want to add some extra battery power. The other nice thing is that they're hot swappable. So if you've got your camera powered on and you're recording and you notice the battery's getting low, you can just add the battery base without missing a beat. You don't have to power the camera off. You don't have to stop recording. When this battery starts to get low, again, you can pull it off, add a second one, all again without having to stop recording. So that's definitely a nice feature. And they've continued that magnetic design onto the mounting accessories. For example, here is a traditional GoPro mount. It has the GoPro fingers on it. As you can see, it can just connect magnetically to the bottom. And there's two clips on either side, and that's going to hold it on very securely. So you don't have to worry about it coming disconnected. To release it, you just press on those two clips on the side, and it pulls right off. And it doesn't matter which configuration you have it in. If you've got the dual screen mod attached or the battery mod, you can see it'll just attach to the bottom there. And that goes for this extra mount, the one that we've already talked about a little bit. Basically, this is the same thing, except it is on a ball joint there. You can see it just attaches to the bottom. And this mount can come in handy for many different scenarios. First of all, if you're gonna be mounting your Action 2 in a way where it's not gonna be quite level, you can use the ball joint to make sure you get it level. It does come with this sticky base, but you can unscrew the top part of it. And as you can see there, it just has a standard quarter 20. So you can then attach that to other different types of mounts and extension poles. Or you can use the sticky base. It's got a reusable sticker on it. So you can stick this to surfaces such as walls, windows, car exteriors. And uh, if it does lose its stickiness over time, all you have to do is rinse it underwater and it'll become sticky again. So, and the other type of magnetic mount that's included in the box is this pendant mount. Now this is kind of like a chest mount and you wear this underneath a shirt. What you do is you remove this part first you would place this under your shirt then add the bottom part and what that does is allow you to attach your camera right to your shirt and uh, you can attach it with either the dual screen mod attached but ideally you just want to use the camera module when attached to your front chest that'll give you a nice point of view shot 
So that's how the magnetic system works, and it's actually a pretty interesting concept. What I recommend doing is purchasing some extra of these magnetic mounts. They're not that expensive, and what that will allow you to do is attach these to all your accessories, like suction cups, extension poles. That way you can move the camera from mount to mount to mount without having to mess around with thumb screws. And lastly in the box we get a USB-A to USB-C cable, and this is what we're going to be using to charge up the device. So let's talk about these extra bases here and some of the functionality that they offer. This camera is completely independent. You can use it just like this and you have full functionality. You have full access to all the different resolutions and features. However, when you attach one of the bases, it does add some extra functionality. The first thing it does is it offer you more battery power. According to DJI, the camera alone can record for 70 minutes. When you add a straight up battery base, that'll extend the recording time to 180 minutes. If you add a dual screen, that will extend the recording time to 160 minutes. So that can be important when you need longer recording time. On top of that, when you add one of the bases, you do get better audio. These have extra microphones all the way around it that the camera can make use of. But the really important thing that these modules do is add extra storage. This camera has 32 gigabytes of built-in storage, so that can fill up quite quickly. However, when you add one of the bases, you can see here we now have a memory card. So you can pop in a memory card and greatly expand the amount of time you can record. And within the menu settings, you can choose where the video is going to be recorded to. And we'll take a closer look at that here in a minute. And the last thing it also adds is a place for us to charge the camera. Unfortunately, there's no way to charge up this module the way it is right now. I'm sure there will be some third-party accessories coming down the road, but in order to charge up the camera module, we do have to attach it to one of the bases. And as you can see, we now have a USB-C port on it, and that'll allow us to charge it up. Now, one thing I want to point out before we get too far into this beginner's guide is that the Action 2, the DJI Action 2, is completely waterproof when using just the camera module. So you could take this part here, the camera module, right into the water, and it is waterproof down to 10 meters. However, what's really important to note is the, either the battery mod or the dual screen mod is not waterproof. So you can't take this part into the water. If you attach it and go into the water, it's going to damage that bottom component. If you do want to take the whole unit into the water, DJI is selling a waterproof housing. Now at the time of recording this video, it is not available for purchase yet, but there are some third party ones available on Amazon like this one here. So a couple things we need to do here before we can start using it. We're going to add some memory to it and we're going to get it charged up. Once we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and power on the camera. Now before we can use it, we do have to activate it and we have to update the firmware. So I'm going to walk through that step by step. So to charge it up, we're going to take our USB cable that came with the package. Now one thing to mention is it does not come with a charging brick, so you can use any one that you have laying around the house from a smartphone or tablet, and then all you have to do is plug it into the USB-C port, and uh, you'll see this light blinking on there, and that's signifying that it's charging. When you have the battery base attached, it's actually charging both devices at once. You can also disconnect the camera module, and it will continue to charge the base on its own. If you're out using the camera just by itself without the base attached, when this battery gets low, you don't have to plug the whole unit in. As long as your base has a charge to it, you just have to attach them, and right away it's going to start to charge the camera module back up. If you're not around traditional power, you can actually plug this into a power bank and charge it that way as well. While it's plugged into a power bank, you can make full use of the camera, and that can come in handy if you're going to be doing any kind of extended recording or long time lapses. Now, as mentioned, you can add a memory card to the base to extend your recording time. DJI on their website has a full list of compatible cards. This is the brand that I like to use myself. This is a 128 gigabyte SanDisk Extreme Pro. There are many other brands that are compatible, so it's just whatever you prefer to use. To install memory, all you're going to do is put the graphic side facing up, just slide it into the memory card slot and just press it in until you hear it click. So we now have our memory card installed, we have the camera charged up. At this point we now need to activate it. With all DJI products you do need to activate it before you can use it and we do that with our smartphone and something called the Mimo app. You can download the Mimo app from the App Store for iOS devices and I do believe from the Google Play Store for Android devices. I don't own any Android devices so I have not been able to test that out for sure. You can see there I have the Mimo app installed. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to launch it and we're going to power on the action two for the first time when we go to activate it just make sure it is attached to your base so we'll power it on by a single press on the top power button there on the back here we're going to set our language so we're going to click english the other thing we have to accept the connection so we'll hit accept we'll agree to their terms of use you can see at this next screen now it's asking us to activate the action two so we'll hit next We'll activate it. 
Now, when you purchased it, you may have already purchased the DJI Care Refresh. If you haven't, at this point during activation, it does allow you to purchase it. I am going to skip it for now. And there we go, activation has been successful. Now, the next thing is we need to update the firmware. There's been some updates to the firmware since it was released. So that's very important to do. It's gonna add a lot of functionality and fix problems. So this next screen here, it's gonna ask us if we wanna join the Wi-Fi that this camera's putting out. And uh, we wanna do that because we need to connect to it in order to download the firmware. And right away, you can see it's come up to update the firmware and it's downloading it now. So it is important before you start this process to make sure your smart device is connected to the internet. The other thing I forgot to mention is that you will need a DJI account, and that's part of when you first set up the Mimo app, it'll ask you to create an account. So you can see here we're getting a message on the camera that the firmware is updating, and it's giving us a progress bar on the phone. So you just have to wait at this point until it's done. Your camera may restart a few times during the firmware update. So as you can see there, we got a confirmation that everything has been updated successfully. So let's go ahead and we'll click done. And that's it. So this camera is activated, it's fully updated and ready to use. Now I'm not going to go into more detail about the Mimo app. It's a very useful app. It allows you to get a live preview of what you're filming. You can use it like a remote, change settings. On top of that, you can also do some editing. It's got some built-in editing tools. But I'm going to save that perhaps for another video. But I do highly recommend going through it and seeing all that it offers. So at this point, I'm going to adjust the view of the camera here so we can get a better view of the menu system on the Action 2. And uh, let's just kind of go over some of its basic functionality. Uh, first of all, powering the camera on, which we've kind of talked about a little bit already. Powering on the camera camera requires a single press of the power button, just a quick press. You can see there that it will vibrate and then it turns on. To power the camera off, we're going to do a long press, press and hold, and as you can see, the camera will power off. On the side of the bases, whether you're using the dual screen base or the battery base, we actually have another power button, so you can use that button as well. Single press and that will power it on. And we can also long press it to power it off. And it works the same way if you're using just the camera module, just a single press will power on the camera module. So I'm just going to demonstrate how the dual screen works if you have purchased the dual screen kit. As you can see right now, we have it powered on and we have a preview of what we're filming. But as you can see, if we flip it over here, we now have this front screen. That's great for lining up shots, or as mentioned, if you're going to be using the camera for vlogging, you're able to see what you're filming. And this front screen is full touch capable as well. You can go in and change your settings. You can do anything with that front screen as you can with the back screen. And as mentioned, at any time you can detach it. You don't have to power the camera off first. And that goes for the battery base as well. So let's go ahead here and we're going to take a look at the menu system and how to access everything. Swiping down from the top brings up our menu. And from here we can do a lot of different things. I'm not going to go over everything because that would uh, take quite a bit of time. I might make a separate video where I go in depth into every menu setting. But from here we can adjust the aspect ratio of our display, we can lock the screen, we have some memory card tools which we are going to take a closer look at here in a minute. These are our general settings and again we're going to take a look at that here in a minute. But we also can swipe over to another menu. There we can enable Pro Mode. Pro Mode will allow you to get into your advanced camera settings like shutter speed, white balance. So if you're a person who likes to set all that, you would enable Pro Mode and then it gives you some extra tools. We can enable and disable voice command, which we're going to take a look at here in a minute. We can lock the orientation, and we can set the brightness of the screen. Let's go back here and take a closer look at our settings. This kind of dives in a little bit deeper, and it gives us all different options in which we can set. We can turn off screens, we can turn off the sounds, enable grid lines. Again, that's something you should go in and explore. To close out the menu, we can just hit that X, and that takes us back to the main screen. So we access them from sliding down from the top. If we slide over from the left hand side, that's gonna bring up our menu, everything that we have recorded on this camera. Right now I don't really have much on the internal storage and uh, we can actually switch between the internal storage and the memory card. And we do so by clicking at the top there and you can see it will list the SD card. We can switch over to it and there's all the footage stored on the SD card. And from that same menu, we can preview our footage, we can delete it. When you want to exit out of there, we can just swipe over from the right-hand side. Now, if we swipe over from the right-hand side when we're at the main screen, that allows us to adjust our field of view. We can tap on that, and it gives us a couple different options. Right now, it's set to standard D-warp. We can go to wide or to ultra-wide. And you can see in ultra-wide, we're getting more field of view. If we go to wide, that gets less. And if we go to standard, it's even less. 
in standard you're going to notice it says de-warp there with de-warp that's going to get rid of the distortion so if you're filming vlogging and you don't want any kind of distortion which uh, action cameras are kind of notorious for you would want to film in the standard de-warp if you need a larger field of view you can set it to wide. Ultra wide is going to give you the most distortion but it's going to fit the most amount in the screen so you just have to play around with it and decide what's best for you and what you're filming. And lastly we can swipe up from the bottom and that's how we're going to change all our settings like resolution, frame rate and we're going to take a closer look at that here in a minute. So that's the basic menu system of the Action 2. It's pretty simple. DJI has done a good job at keeping it organized and easily accessible for the most important settings. Now when it comes to the Action 2, there's all different types of filming modes. We can take photos, we can record video, we can record hyperlapses, and there's two different ways in which we can change our mode. Uh, the first is to double tap on the power button. Just two quick presses. You can see that menu system quickly came up there. But while it's up there, you can continue to press on that power button and it will cycle through the different modes. So for example, a double press, and then we can just keep pressing it here and see slow motion, hyperlapse, video, and so on. And whatever you stop on, that's the mode it's gonna put it in. The other way to change your mode is from swiping from the middle of the screen out. So for example, I'm gonna to touch in the middle and swipe, and you can see that same menu comes up. So I'm in photo mode right now, and uh, to take a picture, all we do is press on the shutter button or record button, and it's gonna take a photo. And uh, we can change a few settings when we're in photo mode. We can swipe up from the bottom. You can see there we can adjust our aspect ratio. We can do a four by three or a 16 by nine, and we can also set a timer. So for example, we can put that on a three second timer. So now when we go to take a photo, it's gonna give us a countdown. So that can definitely come in handy. And if you're using the front screen again, it'll put the timer on the front screen. Again, in photo mode, we can change our field of view if needed. So let's go ahead and we'll switch over to video mode and we'll take a quick look at it. In video mode, when we swipe up from the bottom, as mentioned, that's how we can change all our settings, our video resolution and our frame rate. So right now I have it set to 4K at 16 by nine, but we can adjust that down to 2.7K at 16 by nine and so on. And right below that we can adjust our frame rate. Right now it's set to 30 frames per second and we can adjust that as needed. We can go all the way up to 120 frames per second when filming in 4K. The other thing you can do from this menu is enable Rock Steady, which is the built-in electronic image stabilization. And we can also enable Horizon Steady. And you can see at the top there right now it says RS. That stands for Rock Steady. We can click on that. You can see here we can turn it off now we have a line through it and you'll notice that's all we can do right now but they do have another mode called horizon steady and what that will do is keep your horizon completely level no matter which way the camera is rotating but in order to use that horizon steady the maximum resolution can only be 2.7 K so if we switch it down to 2.7 K at 16 by 9 you'll notice when I hit the rock steady button we now have that new option called horizon steady it, so it just really depends on what you need. Some people don't like the Horizon Steady because it starts to make it look a little unnatural, especially if you're filming something like a mountain bike going down a hill. You kind of want some of that movement in there. But in other situations, you may want it on. And to record video, it's the same way as taking a photo. You can just press the record button there, and then it's going to start recording. We get a counter at the top there, and a red light will start flashing at the back and on the front there. And of course, to stop recording, we just press the record button again. And I should have mentioned that for photo too, but we can also use the side button. You can see we can press it and it starts recording. So it's just whatever is most convenient for you. And as mentioned, we can enable pro mode. That gives us a lot more creative control over the video settings, but I'm not gonna go over that in this video. Now there's another way you can capture content and DJI calls it snapshot. And basically it bypasses having to turn the camera on, set your mode. If something is happening and you just wanna record something quickly, all you have to do is press and hold the record button. You can see the camera's powered off right now, but I'm gonna press and hold. You can see the camera powers on and starts recording. So that's called snapshot. When we press the shutter button again to stop recording, you're gonna see here we're gonna get a message that the camera is about to power off. So it's just a quick way to capture content. And we can actually change the behavior of that snapshot. If we power the camera on and we go to our settings, you can see we have this option called Snapshot. If we click on it, we can set a snapshot to record video, to do a quick clip, or to film a hyperlapse. So just another way in which you can capture content. 
Now the other way is by using voice commands and we have to enable that. So if we swipe down, we'll swipe over again. You can see we have the voice command icon there. We can enable that. It's going to turn yellow. And when we go back to the main screen, you can see we have this new icon signifying that voice commands is enabled. And if you want to get a list of commands of what you can do with the voice command, we'll swipe down, go to our settings. Right at the top, it says voice control. It allows us to set our language. And again, we can also enable it there as well. If we scroll down, we have a menu called voice commands. And that will give us a list of the different commands. So we can say stuff like start recording. We can see it's now going to start recording. And we can say stop recording. The other interesting thing is you don't have to actually be in a specific mode. For example, right now I'm in video mode, but I can still tell it to take photo. You can see there, it just switched to photo mode and took a photo. And right now we're in photo mode, but I can still tell it to start recording. You can see there it switched over to video mode and started recording. And we can also tell it to shut down. You can see there it's going to go ahead and power off. So a couple different ways in which we can capture content. So that's the basic functionality of the Action 2. Now one important thing I do want to show you here, and that's how to manage the memory. Because if you're recording with just the module, like I said, it's going to record to the internal memory, the 32 gigabytes of internal memory. That can actually fill up fairly quickly. So if you're recording and it starts to fill up, what we want to do is transfer the content from the internal memory over to the memory card. And it's actually pretty easy to do. What we're going to do is swipe down from the top, we're going to click on that little memory icon there and you can see we can do a couple things from here. It lists our internal memory and it lists our SD card and it shows us a little graph showing us how much content is on it and how much space is left. And we can actually switch back and forth between the two. So if you want it to record to the memory card, we just select the memory card. If you have the base attached, but you still want it to record to the internal memory, you can do so as well. And when that internal memory is full, all we have to do is transfer it to the memory card. And we do so by clicking this button down in the bottom left hand side. You can see there we're going to get a message saying it's going to export it to the SD card. We hit confirm and there it's going to go and start transferring the content. You can see it's giving us a progress bar. And if it's right full, it can take a fair amount of time. It can take upwards of 20 minutes. So make sure you have enough battery power before you attempt to do that. The internal memory will be completely clear. Everything will be moved over to the memory card. So you can go ahead and start recording again. But let's go back to the memory tool again because there's something else we can do there and that is format. If you get a memory card error or you just want to quickly delete everything off a card, you can format it. That will fix usually any memory card error problems, but it will also wipe it and delete everything. But it's important to note that when you delete it, it's permanently gone. So make sure you've transferred everything over to your computer first. And to format it, all you do is hit format. And I have the internal storage selected. So it's going to ask us if we want to format the internal storage. And hit confirm. Just takes a few seconds and again we get a confirmation that it's done. Uh, you can do some digital zoom on this camera. You can see we have this 1x down in the bottom right hand side. We can click on that and you can see here we can zoom in all the way to four times. You can do that in both photo mode and video mode. At any given time you can click on that battery icon and that's going to give you a more detailed percentage of how much power is in the camera module and the battery base or the dual screen base. The other thing that's interesting to note, you can see our display is set at a 16 by 9 and that's fine. It works well, but it can get a little bit small. If you want a more zoomed in preview, we can swipe down, click on that icon on the top left hand side. As you can see now, it gives us a zoomed in crop view. It doesn't show us everything but it's enough to usually line up a shot and it shows us more detail because everything is bigger. So that's just something you'll have to decide what you like best. So that's basically it. We've covered all the basic functionality of the DJI Action 2. There's a lot more you can do with this camera like creating hyperlapses, time lapses, night lapses, and I'm going to cover some more of those advanced features in future videos. So make sure you're subscribed if you are interested in the Action 2. It's a pretty simple camera to pick up. DJI has done a good job with the menu system, making it intuitive and easy to understand. So at this point, you just got to get out and play with it, capture some content, and you'll pick it up really quickly. Hopefully you enjoyed my beginner's guide and got some value out of it. Give it a thumbs up if you did. It's always greatly appreciated. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel as we'll be covering many different topics on the Action 2 over the coming months. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.